All right, a little late, but better late than not. Nine minutes, so sorry, little connection problem there. Got everything up and running. All the gears are lubed up tonight. This is the Wolf Diddy here on the Wolf Driver All Dog Network. And uh, I'm Bucky. And a uh, surprise breed tonight. Just thinking about, uh, gee, are there any other kind of huskies? You know, Wolf Driver's pack are these hot, beautiful huskies. And um, we have the Siberians, which his are, I believe. And then you have the Alaskan. Alaskan Huskies, different, okay? So we're gonna do that breed tonight. And we have Anki, Anki, the Alaskan Husky. Hello, Sean. What's up, my man, digging that shirt? I can dig it. The Wolf Driver, the whole deal. How's everybody doing tonight, Friday night? Weeks over, we can relax, chill out with our dogs. Also, adding some feline meow driver cat breeds to the show pretty soon. And uh, we're introduced to that last night by looking over the most of the top 20, we got halfway through, uh, most expensive cats, pretty unusual creatures. Jumping and Jamming tonight is the name of that tune. Hello, Denise. Good to see you. Alaskan Husky tonight. So we're just getting easing into the night. And we usually talk about the facts and figures of the breed of the night, which is the Italian Husky. Maria, good night. Okay. Sharon, good. Having some wine. Would love some. I would love some. Let's pretend. It's all good. Thank you so much for your kindness. So all about the dogs. I like wine too. It's a pretty good phone app. <laughs> I like Vine too. Vi, hello. Vi Brown. Hello. Welcome back. So we've got a ditty on uh, Anki, the Alaskan Husky. Anki. Anki and uh, his brother Spanky. Okay. So, Linda, hello. Always nice to see you as well. So, let's get started. I'm going to show you some Wolf Driver stuff tonight. You know, with the Sacco carts and stuff. And uh, the Bike Springer. You know, we want to stay on top of that for those of you who feel like you're not getting enough exercise for your pooch. It's a great tool. Okay, let's see what we want to talk about. Let's just get into the little guy here. Now... These guys kind of have to take a second here, get some good ones, get their eyes shot. Now, they're a little bit more like, um, vine my what? <laughs> Sorry, I can't see it. Sweet red vine is all I have, vine. I didn't mean to call it anything. I just, I'm just sure it's good. <laughs> but there's a, they look more like a uh, a shepherd kind of short haired. Okay, they're more short, wild. They're more short haired. And so, you know, they're a husky, but they're not as bushy as the wolf drivers, Siberians. Now, similarities, of course. And the face and everything, but they do look a little different, Let's say a little thinner in different ways. That'd be a true difference there. So, I'm just trying to get a handle on you know, similar face, a little more chowish, you know. I think than the uh, the Siberians are a lot fluffier looking and not quite as thin. Such cases, so you can tell on the faces, you see. A little different, okay? And we're going to talk about that. I think they have, you know them to have brown eyes and they wouldn't have the blue eyes. So some of those may not be Alaskan, but uh, amazing, Leslie says. I like that. Okay.
All right. Now, you know, they like to, these guys like to pull those sleds, you know. I mean, they like that kind of exercise. So, you know, they've got a lot of stamina. <clears throat> great, if you jog, great companions for that. Um, you know, they're thrifty eaters and need less food than you might expect. The breed likes to roam as well. And the Alaskan ones, uh, Huskies, can make wonderful companions for people who are aware of what to... What you sipping on? Boy, that's that'd just be some Java, my man. Long day, a little extra Josh, Java here. Although there are exceptions to every rule, there's a number of breed characteristics that are generally present among members of the Arctic breed. Uh, they like to eat, but thrifty, and they don't eat a lot. Okay. Weight, males 40 to 60 pounds. Females, again, 5 pounds or so less, 35 to 48. No really inherent uh, health problems. Sharon says, I have a male with blue eyes and a girl with silver eyes. Beautiful. Beauties. They're beauties. Yeah, I'm just looking through some of these pictures here. They're just all kinds of... They're, these are more the Alaskan side. Alaskan uh, husky. See, it looks like a fox, this guy. So they're bred differently. You know, they almost look like a few other breeds if you looked. More of a chowy look. I don't know. So we can kind of get a feel of the difference between the other, the other ones that uh, the wolf driver has, of course. They're not recommended for apartments because they're big dogs, you know what I mean? But they can live in apartments if well trained and properly exercised. <clears throat> American Huskies have very active indoors, they just do best in the fence yard. Okay. And they prefer the cool climates. That's why they're what they do and what they do. Okay, that's what their breed is. And uh, when they are in the heat, though, you want to because they like the cooler climates. You know, that's why the wolf driver stops on his trails under the shade trees, and they just chill. They go into the water. Hello, Deborah. I'm good tonight. Thank you. So we're doing the Alaskan Shepherd tonight. Then we're going to talk about the cats some more a little bit. Uh, we're into the uh, order of events of how expensive cats are. Top 20 cats that you can... Full breads. Some nuts stuff. We're looking at some crazy stuff now. Integrating some cats and dogs. Okay, breed of the night plus the wolf driver's um, huskies. Plus that tonight happens to be Alaskan husky. And uh, we're going to talk about Anki, the Alaskan husky. Got a short little ditty about Anki. Okay, and it's known they don't uh, they don't really don't like to be lived alone. Okay, so if you leave them alone, so it's best they say to have two of these. Wolf driver has four because they hang out together and keeps them really good during the day when there's you know you can't be with your dog every second, but they get really lonely by themselves. Okay, that red one, this one I have. Show me, nice. Hello, Maria. Brad Yates, thank you. Okay, so this is a little ditty about uh, Alaskan Husky, Anki. Anki, Alaskan Husky, is primarily a working dog. Primarily walking, working. Read that way, so in a physical way, he can handle a job. Gentle, playful, cheerful guy, who just loves his family. He ain't shy. As he is friendly with the strangers, not a watchdog for you. But if you need a good watchdog, I could better a chuckle go on. So have both no problem for you. They will get along because Anki, the last time he sings a happy song. Anki, our last time he can get lonely if left alone. That's Spanky there. That's right, Anki and Spanky, the two Alaskan Huskies that are hanging out together. That's a real interesting uh, color combination and coat and uh, trim. Just beautiful. Look at that tail. So they're definitely different than the uh, sides. There's a similar, 
look, but you know, there's a lot of differences here. Cool. All right. Well, so pretty. I lost my two boy, my boy, two weeks ago Saturday. I'm so here. To, sorry to hear that. Yeah, we lose our our kids, man, our dogs, and we just like it's the hardest thing to do. Hardest thing to do. What breed uh, are w are you with? I have a half shepherd, half cane corso, Buster. Buster Big Paws, and he, uh, he's, uh, this guy here, that's Buster, he's half Shepherd, half King Corso, he's five years old now, we got him as a rescue, he's wonderful, we did his DNA, and, uh, you guys, if you want to do DNA on your dogs and you don't know how to do it, uh, those of you that I've announced it, I've kind of skipped it for a week or so because I thought it might get boring. I'm not making a commercial for anybody. This is just uh, where you do it. Mars Veterinarian. Veterinary. They call this pub. Division of Mars Candy. Okay. Uh, thinking about adding two more Huskies. Is it safe to get females, one each, to avoid a fight? That's a good question. I couldn't answer that, but you know... The wolf driver might be able to answer that because he has one female and three males in this four pack that he has now. And the two previous that have crossed Rainbow Trail recently, in at least the last five, or six, eight years, or, uh, but we're both male. Uh, you want a bulldog for a show? Okay, I did a bulldog somewhere back. But uh, I think it was American Bulldogs. So, I mean, there's different varieties. So, this was just some Bulldogs in general. I have to go back and look at, uh, find that show where that is, and maybe you can check it out, and then we'll see if we need to do another one for any reason. But meantime, <clears throat> this is called Wisdom Panel. I don't know if you can see that. It might be backwards, because the camera's backwards. You see Wisdom Panel Insights, and it's wisdompanel.com. Vet Tech by Trade, AKTA Mix. Okay, I'm not sure I understand that, but we can we can figure that out. So you send in for a kit, they send you a swab kit, and then this is what you get back at the end, a uh, printout of the, if you can see the hierarchy, you got half, third generation grandparents, shepherd, Great grandparents, German Shepherd parents, German Shepherd dog mix. Then another half. This that was fifty percent. It's King Corso parents, grandparents, the King Corso. Now the King Corso is a Italian Mastiff. So that's he's a combo of that, and then that's the main deal. And then it shows you other smaller increments of percentage of a few other things that are in his genes. You can see it's percentages. But that's what it comes about there. He's got some American Bulldog, 7 8%. He's got some Blue Carry Blue Terrier. This goes into the generations of, of the, the combinations of the mixed breed mutt. Belgian Malloy, Neapolitan Mastiff, and Bull Terrier. But whatever the case. That's kind of what it looks like. So you, it's, it's a great thing. You send away and go to wisdompanel.com and, and log on by the kit and shows you how to go about it. So forth. I would do. I did it because people was going because even the vet didn't know. He thought he was part Doberman, part and then it was Rottweiler. He's neither one of those. Okay, not even a little. <laughs> so instead of guessing, which can help to, you know, attribute, you know, things that, you know, I mean, genetic prone to something you want to know about, it could be anything that the breed, you know, when you check the breed and what they may be prone to naturally and so forth. It's just good information to have. Mariano, hello, you're the best, thank you. You're the best as well, thank you. So that's the living conditions about the life expectancy, 10 to 15 years on the Alaskan. Husky, litter size, four to ten puppies, and grooming. Coat does not need much except care twice a year, heavy shredding, shedding sessions when they have to be combed thoroughly with a metal comb. And no big deal. You can maintain that coat easy. And um, 
So they were bred basically to be the, the best working dogs. The breedings of the Alaskan Husky are planned breedings and are technically pedigreed. However, they are not considered pure and are not registered with AKC because sometimes crossed from other northern and non-northern breeds, they produce the best working dog possible. No complaints. Now the ones you know that the wolf driver has, they're still working very hard. They just like to pull the sleds. So a little different. Just little different things. Okay. And uh appreciate that. So we're gonna play that ditty one more time before we move on to, to uh Wolf Driver and the Cats. Hanky, Alaska, Husky. Hanky, Hanky. It's Thank you, Kim. I'm not sure to answer that, Sharon. I want to check with the uh, dog counselor. The dog counselor dot com. Dean. All right, Anki and Spanky, the Alaskan Huskies. Seven-year-old Chihuahua, whenever I see her, decided that she no longer to be housebroken. We know, had a stroke. How you do well? Yeah, I'm sorry to hear your, your condition is rough. Uh, put in a crate. Well, maybe hopefully somebody can get him out to exercise out of that crate. I don't know what to tell you, honey. Kim, you're welcome. Sharon, could you please? Thanks. Okay, we're trying to read all these. They are kind of small. I'm just trying to get to them. And uh, so that was the uh, Anki, the uh, Alaskan Husky, and his brother Spanky, who was suggested that you, if you're going to get Anki, you might want to think about getting two. That would be his brother Spanky. Because they get lonely when they're left alone. And like I said, Wolf Driver, he's got four. So chances are they're always ones with somebody. Okay, that's the way I see it. All right. Okay, we're going to check out this, um, this thing on the cats. So what's interesting about these cats is that uh, we were at number eight, the American Wire, and we were talking about starting cats, integrating some cat breeds into the show, which we're going to do. And I thought maybe for a couple nights or so we would, we just introduce like some statistics rather than going into the breed thing like we are with the dogs every night, right? Yeah, and then to being doing kitty ditties along, a little music about the cat breed, whatever the case, and kind of have it raining cats and dogs here, which would be fun. But in the meantime, we were on number eight, the American Wire hair last night. Um, um, the American wire hair. Okay. And, and what the guy's worth anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. It says here. American wire hair. Would you pay a thousand to twelve hundred bucks for that little baby there? I don't know. But, uh, you know, that's, that's what it is. And while I'm getting the next, uh, number seven up, we're going to take a look at, uh, this Alaskan Husky, because it's it is in the, in the regards to the dog breed night, it is indeed our Alaskan Husky, which is totally different looking in a lot of ways than the Siberians, like uh, the Wolf Driver in my shirt. And number seven is a Russian Blue Cat. Okay, this guy. Okay, a, a thousand to seventeen hundred dollars. And uh, they're very rare, I'm sure. That could be the reason that that's the case there. Yep. And then uh, back to another one of our very beautiful Alaskan Huskies. Okay, Alaskan Huskies. 
Now this is called the Peter Ball. Peter Ball is number six. And he goes from seventeen hundred to like three thousand dollars, this little thing here. Now would you want that running around your bedroom? Peter Bald. I have never in my life seen a Peter Bald. Look at that. Look at the, the pace of the head on a body somewhere. But he, they're getting seventeen hundred to three thousand for that for that one. And then back to our beautiful Alaskan Huskies. They're just they're beautiful. It's amazing. They're shorter hair, a little, little thinner looking than most. That's a rat, Sharon says. Oh, it's an expensive rat, I'll tell you that. Then we get into number five on the list of most expensive. We're counting it down to one. And that's that Persian baby. And average price is 3000 Forget about the range. Your Persian cat. You know how soft they are. Very, very soft. Fluffy little balls of fur. Round faces, they have the long hair. They come in a variety of colors, you know. They probably originated in Persia in the 1600s. First shown a cat show in the 1800s. Long since a popular cat. Very popular cat. They have sweet personalities and extremely quiet. D. Miller, beautiful cat. Another example of our dog breed tonight, our Alaskan Husky. He's pretty trim, trim up there. Looks really strong and healthy. And, uh, you know, to me they got a little resemblance of a chow in the look there. I mean, just an opinion, but, uh, so we go to number four, the Bengal cat. Look at this beauty. These get a little bit pricey at three to five thousand dollars a piece. And, uh, Bengals change their spotted markings. They're uh, very nice, strange ones. They've become, believe it or not, domesticated. Cats can be long or short hair, and they range in size in this breed. Crossbred between domestic and feral jungle cats. Wow. Wow. Looks very, very strong as well. We put some pads down. Maybe she will go on them instead. Okay. Somebody's, Nicole's talking to someone on her, I think. Cool. And back down to our, uh, you know, we've been showing these guys, our Alaskan Huskies. Yeah. Uh, Getting down to the end here. Let's see what this is going to be here. We're number three is Savannah. The Savannah is... Okay, you ready for the Savannah? Look at that. Um, the Savannah. Amazing. Let me turn this light off here. Hang on. you got to see this Savannah Coming back here. Let me get that glow out of there. Check it out. $25,000. Number three. One of the priciest cats on the list. The savannah has been bred between domestic and feral. Feral species. The species comes in size both large and small. Small savannas are around seven pounds, while the largest ones weigh in around 25 pounds. Wow. Remember this guy earlier? It's one of our Alaskan Huskies. Look at the coloring and the beautiful the way he's manicured. His face is just absolutely astounding. Astounding, the look and the... Oh. Okay, here's the uh, Ash Ashera cat. Seventy-five to $125,000, number two. Wow. Ashera, A-S-H-E-R-A. Seventy-five to $125,000. Husky, 
Alaskan. Well, it's quite as as lean, a little leaner there than the regular Siberian you see. Let me keep it right. Okay, now that was number two, and of course they go to number one, and they do a very clever thing for the most expensive cat. Your cat, average price, priceless. <laughs> How cool is that? So that's uh, some interesting stuff that uh, is going on with cats, okay? That takes care of that. Going through the most expensive cats. So the, tomorrow we're going to do is we are going to have um, the most popular cats, top 20 most popular. So that won't necessarily mean the price, okay? All right. So we got the Alaskan Huskies. We got our, our feline meow driver stuff, uh, uh, kind of like the intro thing going. How come most Huskies don't get along with cats? Well, that's a good question. We're going to have to look that up because I don't know. I'm not a specialist on there. Um, you might want to check with the dogcounselor.com and see if he knows about Huskies and cats. He just may. There may be something bred in their, you know, temperament. Um, I'll have to do a little research on that. Uh, yeah, okay. So now, I'm going to shift over here. Now, last night we looked at the Wolf Driver's uh, Sackle card. And we also looked at the Bike Springer, for those who are not familiar with the Bike Springer. Um, I'm going to show this one more time about the Bike Springer because uh, I believe it's an important thing for everybody to know if you're, if you're interested in this thing. Have you ever seen people try to ride a bike and hold a leash in their hands? It can lead to very nasty spills. With the Springer, even if your dog tries to run off to greet friends or chase a squirrel, you stay in control. For most dogs, it takes only a few minutes to adjust to running with the Springer. Think of the Springer as the everyday walk reinvented. What makes this product unique is the heavy-duty steel spring because it absorbs up to 90% of your dog's unexpected tugs. The Springer makes the ride safe and constant for both of you. Cool. And the Springer works with most sizes of dogs and most bikes. Like a third hand on your bike, the Springer is easy to use. If you can ride a bike, you can bring your dog. Never enough hours in the day? Now you can walk your dog and get your exercise at the same time. Setting up the Springer arm is simple and takes only seconds. Just install the clamp on your bike. Attach with the cutter pin. You can then release and reattach the arm easily to any bike. The Springer is a great way for you and your dog to enjoy spending time together. After a rest and a water break, it's quick and easy to reattach the Springer to your dog's harness. And the Springer protects your dog from the bike's pedals and wheels, so you can keep both hands safely on the handlebars. What if your dog runs on the wrong side of a post or hydrant? The patented safety release frees your dog instantly. Got more than one dog? Bring them along. Dogs love to run in a pack. And with the Springer, you can attach two or three dogs on each side. The heavy-duty steel spring can handle the pulls and tugs of multiple dogs while allowing you to keep your balance. You know that dogs love to run. It's in their nature. In fact, veterinarians around the world agree that biking is the perfect way to exercise medium and large dogs. With the Springer, you can get outside and spend quality time with your best buddy. So, if you want to keep your dogs healthy and happy, buy them a new kind of toy. Buy them a Springer. They'll be sure to thank you for it. Okay. Once again, the Springer. And, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a godsend for me and Buster. I mean, without it, it <laughs> I couldn't get him enough exercise. Because he wants to go, and this is so much fun and easy. And, um... Uh, Looking to buy a car? You I, can enjoy I, a better experience. I encourage that if you uh, if you're having that issue with your dog. Constance, I also have a pure white Himalayan Persian with green eyes. 
she gets along with all our dogs except the husky i think it's the size in there it's so very active could be could be it sounds i mean it's logical stuff but uh, you can go ahead and email the dog counselor uh, dean at uh, the dog counselor.com email him go to his website and it's got contact information the dog counselor.com he'll have some kind of answer for you i, I guarantee you I guarantee you. if he doesn't i I'm sure he's heard of heard of it. Okay, so what I want to do is get over here and show you a little uh, of the Wolf Driver again. You know, we I think we played this a little bit. I'm not gonna do the. putting the bike springer together with the sack of carts and how they run its huskies. Fluffier, they're a little fatter than the Alaskan. Zorro. I have done Afghans. I have a show on the Afghans on uh, alldognetwork.com, Kim. dognetwork.com and then go to Wolf Diddy host Bucky you'll find all the shows and you can find the Afghan hound on there it's been some time last month one of the first ones I did hello So there's some Siberians that the whoop driver has there. And then there's a uh, Alaskan. You kind of see the difference right away. These guys are bigger and fluffier and fatter than the Siberians. Okay, there you go. Kind of trying to show the difference between the Alaskan Husky and the Siberian. Cool. Okay, well, 
So the breed tonight, Alaskan Husky, one more time. It was Anki, a uh, Alaskan Husky. And here's the ditty one more time. Anki, Alaskan Husky. It's primarily a working dog Way that way So in a physical way He can handle a job Gentle, playful, cheerful guy Just loves his family And he ain't shy Ain't he an elastic husky As he is friendly with the strangers Not a watchdog Brown and blue eye. Anki and Spanky, the Italian Huskies. All right. So if you get one, you, you want to get two. It's <laughs> part of the deal. Does it get lonely by themselves? Of course, the Wolf Driver has four, so they're probably at least one together all the time, at least two together, rather. Okay, we had a good night tonight, Friday night, Alaskan Husky. We did uh, went down the countdown on the rest of the most expensive cats, the Meow Drivers. And then uh, the next thing is going to work on the... Uh, show you the top 20 most popular cats, and then we're gonna start doing the breeds on the cats, part of the uh, dog show. So we'll have Wolf Driver and Meow Driver, two little sections as the breeds. Then we'll always be doing more stuff on the Wolf Driver and his activities and the, all kinds of stuff. So until tomorrow night, I'll see you tomorrow night. Y'all have a great night. Feed those puppies, keep the water fresh, keep the sleepies out of their eyes, and we'll see you then. Good night. Alaskan husband. See you tomorrow night. Y'all have a great night.